This is an Underwood Sunstrand adding machine, model 7120 from around the 1950s. It's got a 10 key keyboard with five other buttons and a printing assembly up here with giant knobs. This case is some kind of hard plastic with a textured paint on it that's chipping off on mine. Mine's not really in great shape cosmetically, but she's got it where it counts, kid. It counts. Where it counts, because it's a, because it's an adding machine. It counts. This thing was made by the Underwood Company, which was a legendary typewriter manufacturer. In the 19-teens, they bought a small adding machine company founded by a guy named Sunstrand. For a few decades after that, they made machines that they called the Underwood Sunstrand. Sunstrand's design was actually pretty revolutionary. This was the first adding machine to have 10 keys arranged in this 3 by 3 grid with the zero at the bottom. Other machines had a full keyboard with all the digits and columns. This keyboard looks familiar to us today because it's the only arrangement that people ever use today for calculators. But when Sunstrand came up with this, it was new and strange. Sunstrand's design let them build the machine with fewer parts, which in theory makes it cheaper to manufacture and easier to repair. But lots of people preferred the big full keyboard, and for good reason. One is speed of entry. On the full keyboard, you can type in several digits at once in parallel. On the 10 key, you have to do them one at a time. Another real downside is the lack of visual feedback. See, when I type a number into the full keyboard, you can still see it on there, and you can change around the digits if you got any of them wrong. See, I'll type in one, two, three, four. Oh, I messed that up, but I fixed it. Now look, I just typed some number into the Underwood. Can you tell what number I just typed? No, you cannot. There's no visual feedback here. What number did I type? Did I mess it up? You can't even tell if I typed any number at all. Actually, that's not quite true. Sunstrand realized that people wouldn't like this, so he put a little indicator window here. Each time you type a digit, this little guy slides over by one position. So this thing tells you how many digits you typed in. You can't see what those digits were, but this is as good as you're going to get. Is there anything actually better about the 10 key arrangement? I know it's cheaper to make, but is it actually better for the user? I'd say not really. It is faster for doing multiplications, but otherwise it's not really beneficial for anything. This thing functions a little differently from a full keyboard machine. For just adding, you type in your numbers and pull the crank each time. Like for this, I just type the first number, crank it. Then the next number, crank it. Then the next number, crank it. To get the total, you crank it once without typing anything, and then crank it again while holding the total button. The total prints with this little box next to it, so you know that one's the total. After the total gets printed, the thing resets to zero, although you can't tell that by looking. This button down here is the repeat switch that's used for multiplying. This one over here is for subtracting. You hit that button and the next number you crank gets subtracted instead of added. Like here's 100 minus 32. This kind of direct subtraction was a feature that most early machines didn't have. They all used complements. These last two buttons are in case you messed up your typing. This one with the arrow will make the machine forget the last digit you pressed so you can type it again. If you really messed up, the one that says core will erase the entire number, not just the last digit. I gotta say something about how this thing looks. It's big and ugly. Sunstrand eventually left Underwood and went to work for the Victor company, which made this thing, the Victor 700. The Victor is much smaller, lighter, and better looking. Maybe I'm being too harsh though. I got a lot of really classy looking machines. Maybe the Underwood really is nice looking, but it just gets outshone by these other machines that are really exceptionally well designed. Maybe the Underwood is kind of like Lisa Kudrow. You remember her? She was on that show Friends, and she was like the unsexy friend. She was a silly goofball, just to contrast with the other two women on the show. But Lisa Kudrow is a beautiful actress, too. She only seemed unsexy because she was a bit weird and she was always hanging around with these other two. What I'm saying is maybe the Underwood is just a little weird, but if we stop and see it for what it is, 
is really just as beautiful as any other machine. Is it really ugly, or is it just being judged too harshly because of its competition? I guess it's a matter of personal opinion. But if you think it's just ugly, you're right.